Now, on the last video, we finished talking about electromagnetism as another one of the essential forces of physics. Along with electromagnetism, which is mediated by the bosons called photons, you also have another force that's actually involved in what we call the electroweak forces, or the unified electroweak theory of quantum physics. Now, this force you probably never heard about. It's called the weak interaction. And what the weak interaction does is basically causes things like radioactive decay to take place. And the particles which mediate this are the W bosons, which can be positive or negative, matter or antimatter, or the Z bosons. Now, you need to know this in much detail, but what you need to understand is this. The weak force is an interactive force, which actually hits quarks, which are the things that make the basic units of the atom, the protons and electrons, and other things like that in the universe, in other words, any hadrons. Now, remember, the two most common types of hadrons are the nucleons, protons, and neutrons, which you see in regular atoms. But there are other ones out there. Now, what they will actually do is that the weak force will interact with the quarks, which are inside those particles. Because remember, each proton is made of two up quarks and one down quark, and each neutron is made of two down quarks and one up quark. Now, what the weak force will do is it will interact with those quarks and change them. And you see that on the top picture here in the middle. That, for example, is that if a war quark, up quark, is hit by a W boson, it would actually interact and change it into a down quark. Now, at that point, there's no longer an up quark. Now, if you did this inside of a, of a neutron, where you have two ups and one down, if you change one up to down, you just turn this, this proton into a neutron. And now it's a different kind of, of atom because you change the amount of protons and neutrons that were in that atom, so you destabilize the atom and cause things like electron decay or alpha particle decay or other kinds of radioactive decay, which we'll talk about in, in a, later in the lecture series. But as you can see, what you need to know about the weak interaction is that it's unified with electromagnetic force in what we call the electroweak theory of quantum physics and that it's a force which acts in inside the actual protons and neutrons. And tiny particles called W or Z bosons will interact with the quarks and change them. And as they change them, they change the particles which those quarks are part of, and which causes this destabilization of nuclear elements and there causes radioactive decay, as we'll talk about later in the lecture series. Another important force is part of an, a separate theory of quantum physics, and we talk, talked about that as the strong force. Now, I go into more detail about this strong force in the quantum physics lecture series, just the, like I did for the, all the other forces, but what you need to know about the strong force is that it's mediated by what we called gluons. Now, these gluons are actually literally the glue that holds together the quarks inside protons and neutrons. So, it's the strong force that will actually keep the quarks together to form things like protons and and neutrons. And those protons and neutrons will also be held together by the residual strong force. So there's actually two types of strong force. The real fundamental strong force mediated by the gluons which holds together the quarks. And this is an incredibly strong force. By the way, since I'm on it, I forgot to talk about the weak force. And as it sounds, it's actually very, very weak. It only affects one quark. It's a very localized force and it is very, very space limited, even more limited than the electromagnetic force because it has to actual mass. Those bosons that make that happen have mass. So unlike gravitons and photons and the gluons, which we're talking about here, these things actually have mass and so they cannot act over extremely long distances. And that's why the weak force is so weak and so short-lived. Now, the strong force will be extremely strong and it will actually be so strong that it's you know, theoretically impossible to separate a proton into its constituent quarks because the moment you actually do that and you break the quarks apart, you have to spend so much energy in one small amount of space that the act of breaking those quarks apart actually creates a new quark which then puts the quarks back together. And so the strong force is incredibly strong. It basically unites those quarks almost forever. Now, the interesting thing about the strong force is that it will lose intensity very, very fast. So just like the, the weak force, it would actually lose intensity very, very fast. But then it minimums out. Now, this is phenomenal. I love this in physics. The idea is that the strong force, remember, this is the glue that holds quarks together to make things like protons. Now, 
if you start separating these quarks and eventually you put them as far apart as the radius of, a, of the minimal radius for a proton. So basically the size of a proton, we're talking about a microscopic, minuscule particle here. If you were to stretch that more, the strong force will still be just as strong. It doesn't matter if you get those quarks and you stretch them to different corners of the universe. The strong force is still just as strong as it was when those quarks was really close together at the size of a proton. What does that mean? It means that you technically can't ever truly separate quarks, which means particles are forever intertwined once they get together. It's so it's kind of like what we call quantum entanglement. It's the idea that the universe is all connected because all these particles are all basically one connected by this ethereal strong force. Now, separate from this crazy concept, it's true that each individual proton is also held together by unique strong forces that hold that proton together. Now, a similar strong force, which is called the residual strong force, will hold protons together with neutrons, together with other protons, together with other neutrons, to form the actual nucleus of the atom. So I think of this that as the rubber band that actually holds together the nucleus of the atom. And a this is not mediated by gluons, but by mesons, which are compositive particles made of two quarks only, not three quarks like the protons and neutrons are. And so the reason why those atoms are nucleus are staying together is because the particles in the nucleus are exchanging these mesons, just like the, the in the nucleus, they're uh, just like within each proton or each neutron, the quarks are held together by exchanging the gluons. All right. Well, now the nucleus therefore is held by the residual strong force and then the quarks are held together to form protons and neutrons by the fundamental strong force.